Race report time! <laughs> My race report for Ironman Wisconsin 2019. Um, it's actually my first Ironman and I learned a lot uh, leading up to it. Um, but basically um, for an Ironman, you know, they had us gear check, mandatory gear check um, the day before. So we actually turned in all of our run gear, our bike gear, and our actual bike the day before, which was mandatory. Um, so it made things a lot easier on race morning because all we needed to worry about on race morning was our nutrition for the morning as well as what we were going to wear for the swim, um, wetsuit or whatnot. Um, race morning, um, all we needed to do was turn in our special needs bags, which was about a couple of blocks away from the actual um, Ironman village and where everything happens. So you want to make sure you leave enough time for that because it is a, a couple blocks of a walk. Um, so that's where you turn in your run special needs and your bike special needs. And then um, you also have access to your run gear and bike gear the morning of um, race day. So if you have to mix your um, nutrition or add water, you know, you, you do have the opportunity to do that. You have about an hour and a half for transition to, to be open. Um, you have access to your bike. So when I racked my bike the previous night, um, one thing is just remember to um, let a little bit of air out of your tires just to prevent any problems. You, I've heard of stories. Um, I was given this tip because I heard of stories of people tires blowing up overnight so definitely did not want to have any problems the uh race morning so that's my number one tip once you turn in your bike so that's the first thing i did when i went into um the bike transition so i went into my bike i wanted to bring my own bike pump because i'm just i don't know much about bikes in general so i'm very f comfortable with like um my own bike pump since i used it the whole training um season so yeah, I really just wanted to use my own bike pump versus someone else's. So that just made it easier. I didn't have to hunt for a, another bike pump that morning. Um, I set up my nutrition on the bike and then I also um, put my Garmin computer on and made sure my e-taps were good to go. So that's all I did for um, race morning. Um, it does take a little bit of time to get from transition, which is inside Monona Center back down to swim start. So make sure you, you leave enough time to walk down. Um, I walked down the Helix just so I could experience what the Helix felt like. And also that's also where my family was um, spectating from. So it was kind of nice to see them right before I started my swim, um, get calm my nerves a little bit. And um, so we walked down the, the Helix off to the swim start. So Ironman Wisconsin, and I think a, a lot of other Ironman is all self-seated. Um, they don't do mass start anymore. I love that as a weak swimmer. I actually really like it a lot because um, I get to seed myself based on uh, my pace. So they, um, they had pace um, little signs increments of 10 minutes of, of when you expect to finish. So I seated myself for, for an hour and 40 to an hour and 50. And um, there was only actually one more group after us, 150 to two hour uh, group. So we were like one of the last ones to go into the water that day. Um, so it was kind of nice because like I said, you swim with people who uh, pace the same as you and it just made it so much more um, easier in terms of like, you know, making sure that you don't get hit. Unfortunately, I did get, still get hit. <laughs> Once I got in, I got hit and I got kicked and, um, but that's okay. That's totally expected, especially in the beginning of a triathlon. Um, no one tends to, intends to hit you. It's just by accident, um, or you hope it's by accident. And, um, you just kind of have to figure out your space and find your space and, and then just go for it after that. Um, so yeah, the swim for 2019 was apparently really tough. Like it was one of the toughest swims of my life. Um, it was very choppy and we had high winds and um, I was just all over the place and it was very difficult to sight. Um, 
I'm just honestly so glad that I finished because it felt like every time I would pass a buoy, there was always someone hanging onto it or someone hanging onto a kayak. It was, it was really, really scary. And um, as a weak swimmer myself, it was just like, you know, one of those things that I just had to keep swimming and not stop because I have vertical as well. So I just, my goal was to just keep going and to just finish. Um, so I'm very thankful that I was able to pass that swim for Ironman in Wisconsin. Um, was very emotional coming out of that water too. Like I just was, didn't know if I made cut off and it was just, it just felt super long. Um, so, and then Ironman Wisconsin is also a big rectangle. Um, I studied the map prior to the race and um, just make sure to familiarize yourself with distances on those, on the rectangle, because it really helps mentally in terms of like, okay, how long you expect to finish like each quadrant of the rectangle, um, just so you know what you're up against too. Um, but yeah, like once I finished, uh, it was very emotional, like I said, and you know, I was just so happy that I was out. Um, I was so emotional that I couldn't believe that I, that I got that far, that like I completely forgot what to do next. And next thing you know, there's a wetsuit stripper. Um, if you've never experienced a wetsuit stripper before, it's basically like a bunch of volunteers that will help you out of your wetsuit. So once I saw her, I was like, oh my gosh, like I forgot I was supposed to like unzip and, and all of that. So she actually helped me take off my whole wetsuit, <laughs> um, which is if you've never experienced taking off a wetsuit before it actually takes a lot of energy to take off so um having wetsuit strippers at iron man wisconsin was a huge help um basically she unzipped my back take off took off my top and then as soon as it got past like my waistline she had me sit on the ground and they literally just yanked off the whole wetsuit off of my feet so it was like super fast and like i said zero to like no energy coming from me so it was very 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 helpful um so once we got the wetsuit off um i actually left my um slippers at right at the edge right right where um the wetsuit strippers were a little past them because i knew that i had to run up the helix so he, like I, that was a last minute decision on my part. I actually saw um, a couple of other people leaving their their slippers there. There wasn't that many slippers left behind, but when I did see it, I was like, oh, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm so thankful that I did see another triathlete do that because it saved my feet going up. Cause yeah, like it's just so much more comfortable running up that helix. So if anything, that's my number one tip, like wear your, uh, slippers up until that point leave it there no one's gonna touch it and upon swim exit just quickly grab it before you run up the helix I wanted to attack my race like one leg at a time like someone told me to just kind of focus on what was happening currently versus thinking about the whole 140 miles that I needed to do so you know once I finished a swim it was like a big check mark off of my list and I was like okay onward let's go let's let's get to the bike um, so you know running up that helix it was actually not as bad as I thought it would be like I was really intimidated by that helix going into the race like it just looked steep and it just looked like daunting like just going getting up there so for Ironman in Wisconsin you have to you know swim exit um, once you swim exit it's the, the helix which is the parking garage helix they call it um, you have to go up three flights to get to transition and that whole thing is just so full of energy so lined with um, spectators so really enjoy that part like I was I knew my family was in the third floor because that's where I said goodbye to them before I started swimming so I was really looking forward to like seeing them up there and um, just like soak in that energy like it was just so unbelievably um, uh, like it was just so like you just feed off of that energy and you know seeing my family at the top like I was just so excited to see them at the same time very emotional because I was like telling them about my swim in three seconds basically the three seconds that I had with them um, 
So it was really, really nice to see them. And then, you know, once you get up top of the helix, you go straight. There's a, a bunch of volunteers that'll guide you and you basically go inside the building and get into transition one, which is um, transitioning from swim to bike. Um, for me, race day, it was um, overcast. It's a little bit chilly considering, um, you know, it's still kind of summerish. Like, I didn't expect it to be that cold on race day. So um, it's a good thing, but for me, I decided to do a wardrobe change from swim to bike um, simply because I knew if, you know, from past triathlons and half irons, like once you get out of the swim and into bike, you're wet from swimming. So I wanted to be as comfortable as possible going into my 112 miles. So I actually did a complete wardrobe change um, out of my tri, tri suit. So new pair of bottoms, new pair of top, like it's just so refreshing to tell you honestly. And um, going into that bike, which is my favorite discipline, my favorite leg, I was very excited to start. Um, I was a little bit cautious in the beginning because there was a lot of turns um, coming out of transition and oh, I had to ride down that helix now, which again was very intimidating leading, going into the race. like. Um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be, you know, just make sure your your bike is in the gear that you want to be in um, going down that. And um, I actually had to, you know, just just be cautious and make sure I make it one piece going down that helix. But once I started the, the route, like, you know, there's a lot of um, turns in the beginning because you're navigating out of Madison. Um, so just be careful with that part and, um, I also noticed that the first 10 miles of like the stick, which is what they call it, the, the, the long part of the route, um, it's very, very bumpy. Uh, like the roads were just terrible. I saw um, bottles everywhere and I was like, my gosh, like so many people lost their nutrition. And like, I was like, I hope that doesn't happen to me. So uh, next thing you know, I actually was one of the unfortunate ones, my, um, the, my, my drink carrier, which is right behind me, behind my saddle, actually my nutrition fell and I heard it. Thankfully, I heard it fall. As soon as I heard it, I had I stopped. Thankfully, no one was right behind me. Um, and then, you know, I had to come back and get it. So once I got it, I was about to put it on my bike. I realized that um, not only did the nutrition fall, but the actual carrier of my nutrition completely fell apart like um like everything just it was upside down so i was freaking out i was like what the heck what am i gonna do i'm already thinking about how the heck i'm gonna carry i had six hours of nutrition that i needed to to have on me have on my bike because that's pretty much the livelihood of my bike um nutrition so there was no way i was i wasn't gonna i wasn't gonna leave this so i was already like okay am i gonna put it in my trice suit on the front and my my pockets are, were too small in the back or am I going to stick it in my shorts? I didn't know what I was going to do. I was, I was like freaking out. And what do you know, like less than like two minutes later, I look down the street. There's a truck coming my way with his um, flashers on. And it was one of the bike tech support of Iron Man. And I flagged him down and I was like, oh my gosh, do you have anything? Do you have duct tape to hold my nutrition bottle onto my bike? And thankfully he did. He had this big bright orange duct tape and duct tape fixes everything. So it was kind of hilarious that I rode 112 miles with duct tape to hold my nutrition bottle behind my saddle. So it worked um, and thankfully so. Like I was just so lucky to, to have that have him be there at the perfect moment the perfect time to save my race because i honestly like was gonna like stick it down my shirt or something i i didn't know what i was gonna do um and i needed it i needed that six hours worth of nutrition um so but yeah that happened like within the first 10 miles and another issue that i was having was my garmin my garmin um there's nine, my Garmin computer. So there's nine fields on my Garmin computer and basically only three was working that day. Um, I don't know why I picked that setting because I actually don't use 
the race setting at all. Like I could have just used the training setting. It would have been the same thing. It would have measured everything. Training is what I've been doing this whole time. And for some reason, because I'm racing, I picked the race setting. And I thought I had double checked everything. And for whatever reason, I still don't know what, total human error, like all my fields weren't showing up. So I didn't know my speed. I didn't know my cadence. I didn't know what mile marker I was. Like I didn't know how far I was in the, in the, in the route aside from like estimating and guesstimating like, okay, I'm two hours in. So I'm probably like mile 30, mile 32. Um, like it was a whole big guess on how far I had ridden that day. Um, thankfully my Garmin computer did show me, um, total time on the bike. And it also showed me my heart rate, which was really good because I trained based on heart rate, and then my power. Oh my gosh, I was so excited, thankfully, that my power was there because, again, that's how I trained. That's how I was going to ride um, Ironman Wisconsin, the, the bike. Like, my whole bike was based on my power. So I was just thankful that, that I was able to see my power. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword, sword that um, I was unable to see my total distance. It's good because then I didn't really like focus too much on it and I just focused on my power and just didn't really just enjoyed the ride. And it was bad because when I wanted to know like, oh, how many more miles do I have left? I actually didn't know. Um, the only time I would see it how far I was is when they would have the signs and the signs were few and far between like it didn't it was like they had mile 10 mile 20 and I think it then jumped to like mile 40 and then next thing next sign I saw was like mile 90 so yeah so I didn't know how far I was in the um the 112 miles of my ride so it's kind of funny now that I think about it but when it was happening I was just like oh my gosh I don't even know how many more I have left so that was pretty much my bike. Um, it's exactly what I had anticipated. Um, going into the race, I, um, I had ridden the course once during training um, and was able to do the loop twice. Um, so for Wisconsin, there's a loop that we do twice and there's the stick. So it looks like a lollipop. And then the stick is what they call coming out of um, downtown Madison into the town of Verona, like that stick is um, the part that I didn't get to physically ride. But the day before the race, um, my husband and I actually had a chance to um, ride the whole course. Like he drove the course and then I said, okay, let's ride the loop too. So we actually took some time out of our day to actually experience it in the car. Um, obviously it's a lot different driving through it versus riding through it. So I had to really visualize like what it would feel like. Um, that, that stick was actually hillier than I expected. Um, a lot of people told me that there's one, there's a really long, steady climb um, to save my legs at the end. So you know, driving through it the day before really, really helped. And you know, strategizing on race day, making sure I have enough legs at the end, like it, it really helped a lot. Um, and I'm proud of how I rode Mad uh, Madison because. I stayed within my power. I trained based on power. So um, I knew exactly what I needed to do to make sure I had enough legs to get into the marathon part. Um, so yeah, it was fun. I, I love, I actually realized I really like climbing on my bike. Um, I prefer it more than flat routes um, going through this experience. So it's, it's actually funny that I do like that. But anyway, so, uh, I finished the bike part and um, what else happened during the bike? Yeah, it's just a, a fun experience. Like there was a lot of people considering the weather that day. It rained on the um, second loop. So unfortunately, it was a little bit tougher going down those hills. Um, I was very cautious and I, I didn't want to have any accidents. Um, so yeah, like it was an, a very enjoyable bike 
for Madison. Um, and then once I finish the bike part, um, you know, so it's transition to coming from bike to run. Um, I actually had a uh, backup outfit change in transition just in case I wanted to change out of what I wore for bike. And it was really just so comfortable. Um, I didn't have any problems with it on the bike. And, um, you know, going into the run, I was like, yeah, let's just continue to wear it. Um, because like I said, it was very comfortable, but just know that you do have the option to change um, from bike to run if you want to. Oh, no, actually I, did, I didn't I did change my top, I changed my bottom. <laughs> um, again, just there's just something about fresh clothes like going into the run. Um, so that really helped. The top, it didn't really bother me. Um, so, and then what else happened in transition? Um, oh, one thing that I um, did for my transition helper. So like once you get into transition, you actually have like a volunteer um, that will help you with everything that you need. So like I'm so thankful for them. Um, my first helper in T1 was Shauna. Shout out to Shauna. And then my second helper during T2 was Jen. So I actually um, learned a little nice like trick from um, a friend who he has given them uh, gift cards. So I actually got them gift cards as well. So Starbucks gift cards. And they were so thankful And when I gave it to them and they were so pleasantly surprised that I had that for them. Um, so I just gave them a little note, like pre-written and it was already set up. And I gave that to them right after um, they helped me and they were just so thankful and they gave me a hug. And um, Shauna actually reached out after the race and said, oh my gosh, I tracked you the whole day and congratulations on your first Ironman. So it was kind of nice to, to have that connection with like a random person that was like totally helping you, you know, on, on race day. So um, yeah, and then uh, once I started the run, you know, um, leading up to race day, like when I would think about the marathon part of the Ironman, like I, I was just like really hoping that it would be just be um, autopilot. Um, coming from a running background, I just wanted to just like, you know, whatever happens, happens at that point. As long as I stay within myself, I, as long as I keep my heart rate down, um, I think it'll be, you know, it'll be a good end part of the race. So. Um, leading up to that, like, um, getting off the bike and starting that run, like, um, the bricks really, really helped me. Like I did, I bricked it. So brick is when you go, um, immediately from bike to run during training. So I did as much of that as possible so that like the jello leg feeling of, um, when you initially start running after biking isn't there. So it actually helped me tremendously like doing a lot of bricks that's one thing i learned um from from my initial half iron steelhead race like i felt like i didn't do enough bricks for that race and i felt it and you know going into the run part for for madison i was like oh wow this is actually really great like i felt so good off the run and i was so happy to see my family again um along the routes and um it was a very comfortable weather and like yeah, it was, it was like a good time um, until the second half part. So after I did 13 to, no, actually I got up to mile 15 and um, my hip problem, which I was having, you know, the last 10 weeks of training started coming up again. So I unfortunately did expect my hip issue to sprout up sometime during the marathon part. Um, and I was actually really thankful that it didn't come up until mile 15. So, um, I was thankful that I got that far without any pain. So, you know, like once I started feeling it, it was just like really just pain management at that point. I knew I needed to walk run at that point and just like really baby it so that it doesn't, um, become super painful that I can't finish. Um, so yeah, like, you know, at, at that point I just wanted to just enjoy it. Um, I tried to run as much as possible without having to walk. Um, but yeah, like my pace unfortunately started slowing down. Um, it got really dark, um, physically and mentally for that last half of the marathon. But, um, I knew I needed to like, just continue on, you know, just focus on my nutrition. 
Um, so, oh, the one thing I didn't mention earlier. So I've been doing low carb, high fat, not necessarily ketogenic for, for this race, but um, I was pretty well fat adapted for this race. And um, uh, I didn't want to introduce any sugars. Um, I, I uh, fueled with UCAN, which is a slow burning um, carbohydrate. So it's a super starch. And so it doesn't spike your insulin or anything. And actually that's basically my nutrition for the whole race. Um, and, and it's been, it's done amazing during training and it did amazing on race day. So, but anyway, so I was low carb, high fat the whole time and leading up to the race, I knew I wanted to introduce sugar at one point just to kind of like have like a boost of energy and whatnot. Um, so after mile 15, I started introducing Coke, cola at the stops. And I also started introducing, um, M&Ms. So I had mini M&Ms in my run special knees bag. So I was so excited for those M&Ms. Like I knew they were there that I completely forgot to get my headlamp from the special knees bags. That was more important than the light. But you know, I regret not having that light later because there are some few spots of um, the run route that was pretty dark. So I highly recommend getting um, some kind of um, headlamp and whatnot if you expect to finish that late like me. Um, so that will definitely help, especially along the, um, the lake around University of um, Wisconsin. Um, but yeah, like I started introducing mini M&Ms and I started introducing cola. Oh, and the chicken broth. Holy smokes, that chicken broth was so, so good. It was like amazing. It felt like it was just so refreshing to, to, to drink at that point because it was nice and warm. And I actually didn't think it was going to be that warm. Like I thought it was going to be cold soup, but I was still going to drink it anyway. It was, so it was so surprising to um, drink that. And it helped so much because on the last half of the run, it started raining. It actually rained a lot harder on the run than the bike. Um, they weren't forecasting rain at all for, for the run part, so I was actually surprised. A lot of the racers, the triathletes that I had conversations with during that marathon, like we were all like, is this even forecasted? And everyone said, nope, didn't expect it. So yeah, I was pretty miserable that last, part, that last bit, but um, the chicken broth, definitely helped a lot and the coke was so yummy it was so good um so yeah like that was pretty much the run part um i just kept trucking along and you know one foot in front of the next and it was hard but like i i knew that like the finish was coming up and i just wanted to to finish and see my family again and just experience that red carpet and yeah like it was it was Good. It was as I expected, the run part. Like I, as much as I wanted it to be autopilot, it pretty much was autopilot. Um, I just knew that on my part, I needed to maintain nutrition and I looked forward to all the little treats that, that was gonna be there at the last half, which I really needed. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much like my overall race report. Um, the things that I fueled with, the um, the whole time was, like I said, you can, I had base salt for, um, my electrolytes and of course water. Um, I had bonk breakers as well, which is protein bars, um, as needed. I actually didn't eat it as much as I thought I would. Um, but yeah, I had it there just to kind of change the, the taste. Um, the way I feel with you can, so, um, everyone does it a little bit differently. I don't like the taste of UCAN at all. <laughs> it's the worst taste ever. Um, but so the way I feel with it, I just wanted to get it over with as much as, as fast as possible. So I actually do a concentrate of it, um, three scoops. So three scoops is the maximum you could do. And the three scoops will last me three hours. So for most people, one hour, one scoop. And three scoops per concentrate is, is the most you can do. I think that's what it said, but that's what I've been training with. So um, that's exactly what I did. So um, I started my um, swim nutrition at 6.45 a.m. Uh, I took three scoops of you can along with two capsules of um, salt sticks and water. So that was my swim. 
So that was around 7 o'clock. So I knew three hours from there, around 10 a.m., was going to be my next dose of Ucan. So that was going to be on my bike. Um, I estimated the distances um, when I wrote it down based on, on my speed and my average speed that I do. So I knew exactly when to take my um, 10 a.m. You can dose, call it dose, 10 a.m., and then my next dose would have been at 1 p.m., which would have brought me to the special needs bag, special needs bike bag. Um, so it actually really worked out really well, my nutrition, because um, I didn't bonk. I felt so good the whole day. Like, the only time I had real issues was I had a little bit of stomach ache going into bike, um, but I think it's because I swallowed a lot of lake water swimming. Like I said, that was a really tough swim. Um, I couldn't, there was no rhythm whatsoever. So sometimes, you know, water would hit me. And I think it's because I was just trying to breathe as much as possible um, during the swim. And I think, you know, just swallowing that lake water affected me. But thankfully, um, it didn't last too long. Probably like the first hour of bike, I had a mild stomach ache. Um, but after that, and I was really scared when it was happening because I was like, oh no, is it going to get worse? I hope it doesn't get worse. Like, it, it just, yeah, it kind of went away. Um, so I continued on with my UCAN nutrition and thankfully that as, as compared to training, like I didn't have any issues with it. Um, I just made sure like I kept, you know, I was diligent about my base salt and um, I did the licks for the for the, my electrolytes and, and then of course the water um, and yeah like I basically my nutrition was basically around the clocks from 7 a.m. 10 a.m. 1 p.m. 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. so I actually had five um, five doses of UCAN up until 7 p.m. wait does that make sense no 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 four sorry four because the fourth one brought me to 7 o'clock um, at night. And then once I knew, like, you can't, I can only take so much of it, um, I knew at that point, like, I wanted to kind of change it up. Um, so, like, I expected it to last me until 7, which it did. Um, so thankful that it brought me all the way there. And then once 7 o'clock hit, that was when I started introducing sugar and all of the treats and that I looked forward to like the M&Ms and the chicken chicken broth. Um, it was just so nice to like have those um, treats at the end of the run. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoy my race report. Um, let me know if you have any questions I would love to share. Um, I've learned so much um, from others, other people's race reports. So um, I want to pay it forward. And um, thanks to all who have helped me um, you know, going into Wisconsin, all the little tips and tricks and um, little, you know, race plans that they, that you've shared with me. I really appreciate it because I really incorporated a lot of it um, into my own race. So.